Welcome back to Fiction Food Friday. You guys voted for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, so here we are. This will be a fun one today because when uh, Mr. Wonka gave me the Chocolate Factory, he taught me some really cool recipes. So I'll throw a couple of those in today as I show you how we wind down here at the Bucket Residence. So this first one is for the really true fans who have actually read the book and not just watched the movie. Eatable marshmallow pillows. They're soft and cozy and they serve your midnight snack cravings all at the same time. Normally it's best to prepare these like four hours before bedtime, otherwise you burn your ears. Right, Grandpa? What'd you say? Exactly. So we gotta start by finding ourselves a pan for our pillow. I'm using a big one. It's a 12 by 18 because I wanted it to be like pillow size, you know, but you can use a smaller one for like a circular one. They have pillow pans out there. But just to let you know, if you use a big one like this, I had to do two of the recipes to make it thick enough. Just something to keep in mind. Okay, so you wanna spray the bottom and the sides of your pan and then also dust the entire surface with powdered sugar and just make sure to cover it well. And now in a KitchenAid bowl, if you have one, add one cup of water and six packets of unflavored gelatin powder. Mix it in there so that everything's covered and then just let it sit. And then meanwhile, in a saucepan, mix together three cups of sugar, one cup of water, two cups of corn syrup, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Cook it over medium heat until the sugar dissolves and a candy thermometer reads 240 degrees Fahrenheit. Definitely wanna make sure that it gets to 240. Don't slack on that. With your mixer on low, slowly pour the syrup into the gelatin mixture. And once it's all poured in, then you can whip it on high speed until it is thick. And this takes a long time. Even when you think it's thick, you probably need to go a little bit further. You can tell it's ready once the fluff starts to kind of take shape. And you can see the lines of the mixer in it, like this. Once you get to that point, add two tablespoons of vanilla extract. Mix it up and then remove your bowl and pour it into the pan. Once you've got it all in there, just make sure to smooth out the top because nobody likes a lumpy pillow. Mm -hmm. Then we're gonna let that set. And like I said before, at least four hours. And then once it's set and dry, you can just dust the top with a little more powdered sugar, pull the sides away, a little bit so that it's not sticking and then you can turn it right out of the pan. And then we always finish the day with a nightcap of fizzy lifting drink. Now you can flavor this however you want because it's the special gas that matters. And today that special gas is of course carbon dioxide. Or is it? Now you gotta have seltzer because it's the fizziest and this is, this is special, this is special Wonka seltzer that I unfortunately can't give to you because I would be in fact unfortunate. So. But then with this seltzer you just mix in some uh, flavored simple syrup, which simple syrup we've made here plenty of times. Very simple. It's essentially equal parts sugar and water and then you can flavor it. So I'm gonna flavor this blueberry maple. It's like a little slice of pot before bed. So in a saucepan, mix a cup of water, cup of sugar, and then a cup of blueberries, if this is how you're flavoring it. And I like to mash up the blueberries a little bit. Bring that mixture to a simmer. Once you've gotten to the simmer, then strain the berries out and return it to the stove until it thickens. Then we'll add in about a tablespoon of maple syrup or so and mix it together and let it cool. And now use a funnel or a cup with a pour spout. Pour your seltzer into your soda bottle and then add in some simple syrup. Now the factory doesn't provide everything all the time, so I did have to get these bottles from TJ Maxx. Then give it a gentle swirl to mix the two together, but don't shake it or the effect goes down, literally. And now the last thing you need, and this might seem weird, but you should add a little lemon juice. It might seem like an odd combination when you're adding like a maple flavor into soda, but it really just brings out those flavors, kind of in the same way salt does. You wanna try some, Frank? Come here. That was weird. Okay, and now we get into bed. Fluff your pillow, pour yourself a drink, and then we drift off into the world of pure imagination. <laughs>